now we're back and let's delve into some more details of uh, reconnection uh, specifically um, start thinking about something called the reconnection rate okay in other words the rate at which magnetic field uh, magnetic flux in particular uh, is annihilated because uh, as we said um, you know as we pointed out the whole point of reconnection conceptually yes it's cutting and pasting field lines which is which is not um, you know permitted in mhd and so you have to you have to invoke a fancy uh, non ideal effects such as finite resistivity and everything where the finite resistivity comes from that's another matter uh, but we will see but the bottom line is the reason reconnection is so interesting to astrophysicists uh, is that it's it's a potential way of converting magnetic energy into in, into heat uh, also uh, you know bulk kinetic energy of the flow and so essentially the amount of magnetic energy that's converted is essentially it depends upon the amount of magnetic flux that's annihilated that's eaten up right and so the rate at which this magnetic flux is annihilated is very important this is called the reconnection rate or it's related to what's called the reconnection rate and we, we, we let's 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 uh, embark on on a little bit of discussion of of, of this topic right so um, this is what's called the Sweet Parker scenario after after the two scientists uh, Eugene Parker and Sweet, uh, who uh, almost independently came up with with this uh, particular kind of calculation, and uh, it's it's uh, it's all explained in in this figure here. The basic details are are the same as what we've seen earlier. So you've got two anti-parallel field lines. You see one going this way and the other going this way, right? Two anti-parallel field lines which are being brought close to each other at a velocity vi okay at a at a speed v sub i right as they come close to each other the straight field lines get a little little curved like this right and finally what happens is this this field line reconnects with this field line to give a thing like this and this one reconnects with this one to get give, give a configuration that looks like this and right here this is the reconnection region or whatever the reconnection variously called the reconnection region or uh, often called the x point for obvious reasons you see the magnetic field configuration looks like an x or null point so on and so forth okay it's, it's in this small region that all the action happens okay now from ampere's law we know uh, simply because you've got you've got oppositely fi directed fields uh, uh, you know he, uh, a field pointing this way and a field pointing this way right here in between you need to have a current in this case a current that's coming out of the plane of the screen so this dot would be the head of the arrow okay and 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 you can either th think in terms of current density or you can think in terms of electric field okay uh, because you know from from uh, ohm's law you just have uh, j uh, is equal to sigma e. Now you have a finite sigma, not an infinite sigma, right? This is the conductivity. And so the j and the e go hand in hand. They're the same essentially except for a factor of sigma. And um, yeah, so you remember, I mean, you know, the, the, the whole point of, of uh, you know, um, of, of ideal MHD was that the sigma was infinite. Therefore, there was no way you could have any electric field in the bulk fluid. In ideal MHD, there's no scope for an electric field. Whereas here, you see, at least in this in this very local region, uh, you, you have uh, you know uh, the appearance of an electric field. So this is yet another way you can you can understand this oft invoked statement of of stated. Uh, thing uh, that uh, ideal MHD is violated in reconnection. What one really should say is ideal MHD is violated in the reconnection region right here, okay. Uh, via, why? Well, via finite resistivity effects or via the appearance of, a, of an electric field 
like that. In this case, the electric field uh, the, is, is, is pointing out of the plane of the uh, screen uh, and, and so this would be the head of the arrow. Okay, right. So, let us now by way of dimensions, let us think of the, the thickness of this current sheet as 2 times small l. Okay, so the current sheet thickness thickness is 2 times small l whereas the macroscopic di dimensions are 2 times large l. Why the 2? Well, you cut it in between and so this would be large l, this would be large l and even here you cut it like this and so on one side you will have small l, the other side you, have, you would have small l. The other thing this tells you is that this, this uh, figure uh, attempts to um, show to you is that you have these, these field lines approaching very, very close together. They come very close together and then finally post reconnection what happens is they snap like this. The, this, is the po this is the after kind of field line like this, this one and this one. Okay. The field lines snap apart and they, they move out at a, a velocity v0. So, initially this, this would be the velocity at which the field lines are being brought together and this v0 would be the velocity at which the field lines are snapping apart. Okay. Okay. So, so, having done this, now let us see. Like we said, mass is conserved but magnetic flux is not. That is the whole point magnetic flux being not being conserved is yet, yet another way you can understand uh, uh, the violation of ideal MHD. In ideal MHD, magnetic flux is always, always conserved, right. So, in this case, uh, in at least in the reconnection region, magnetic field is not conserved, magnetic fields are annihilated, okay. So, let us presumably due to resistive effect, okay. So, um, right. And by the way, we are talking about a steady state scenario in which there is, there is no, in other words, you know, everything uh, appears steady. In other words, the, the, the entire, the rate at which mass is swept in is equal to the rate at which mass is, uh, mass is leaving. So, in steady state, the rate at which magnetic flux is swept in is equal to the rate at which it is annihilated. There is a whole definition of steady state, okay. There is no difference in these rates. Otherwise, this would be violated, okay. So, this is another, de another way you define the steady state. You, you, you are sweeping in magnetic flux at a certain rate into the reconnection region, okay, and it is being eaten up, okay. The magnetic flux is being destroyed or annihilated at a certain rate and these two rates are equal, okay. That is another definition of steady state, okay. So, what is the rate at which magnetic flux is swept in? You see, V i is the, is the speed at which, uh, you know, the magnetic flux is brought in, okay. And, and this whole annihilation is ha happening over a, the thickness of the current sheet, you agree, 2 L and therefore, the, the rate would be V i over L like that. In other words, the dimensions of V i over L would be per second. You agree with that? So, so this gives you Gauss per second, okay. 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 Now, so this is the rate at which magnetic flux is swept in this thing. Now, what is the rate at which is annihilated? Now, annihilation follows from finite resistivity effects. So, now what happens is you have, you have the induction equation which now looks like this dB dt equals lambda where lambda is, is in, includes all the, all the resistive terms uh, del square b, okay. The generally you would have seen the induction equation as this. curl of right and that is all because the other the other resistive term was generally not important 
this term is generally not important. In this case, the opposite is true. This is not important. Okay. And so it's only this term which is important. So you have db dt equals lambda, you know, del square b. And from, you know, order of magnitude analysis, you see the db dt is like a gauss per second. And the gauss per second is what? So you have, uh, you know, a lambda, let's keep lambda as it is, okay. And this del square b is something like, right, 1 over l square, uh, because it's like a d over dx kind of thing, d over dx, d over dy. And where is, you know, uh, why are we writing this as 1 over small l squared? Because the whole point is that d over dx tells you the rate of change of magnetic field in space. Where is the magnetic field changing? The magnetic field is changing only in this region, isn't it? It's really, or rather, it's changing over, over this length scale. So it's correct to replace the d over dx by something like 1 over l. And therefore, d square, uh, d square over dx square is something like 1 over l square, where l is a small l, the uh, uh, dimensions of the reconnection region. Because that is where the d over dx is appreciable. Outside of that, there is, there is really no change. d over dx is as good as 0. That's why we write the magnetic fields are annihilated as lambda, lambda, we keep it as it is, times b naught over l squared. The L squared comes from the del squared B. And if you, if you look at the dimensions of lambda, if you look at the dimensions of L, it turned, this, this works out to be B naught B per second. And it has to. The left-hand side is B per second, so it works out. Now, what you do, the whole point of the steady state assumption is that you equate the rate at which magnetic flux is swept in to the rate at which magnetic flux is annihilated. So these two quantities need to be equated. So you equate this to this, okay? You write Vi Vi B naught over L equals lambda B naught over L squared, okay? This gives us the all important width of the reconnection region. Very, very important. How thick is the reconnection region? From this, I, I, I strike off B naught and I strike off one, one factor of L. Right? I strike off this and I get L equals lambda over Vi. In other words, lambda is directly proportional to the resistivity. Okay, so the more resistive, okay, the larger the value of resistivity in this region, the thicker the dimensions of the region where all this reconnection action is happening. Okay, the more the resistivity, the thicker this region. The less the resistivity, the thinner this region. Okay, maybe I should use the word anomalous resistivity because in the bulk of the flow, the resistivity is technically zero. Okay, it's only in here that some magic resistivity, some to, due to some non-ideal effects, resistivity is starting to appear it's kind of an anomalous effect. So it's really an anomalous resistivity we're talking about here, okay? So the larger that anomalous resistivity, the thicker the dimensions of, of the, um, you know, of the reconnection region. Also, the smaller the inflow velocity, right, the thicker the dimensions of the, uh, uh, the, of the reconnection region. That's what this formula is telling us, okay? Yeah. So that's about, so that's about the, you know, uh, the, the width of the reconnection region, this, this quantity, this quantity, very important, okay? But we also need to consider the, the macroscopic length, the larger dimension. What about this capital L? As you guessed, we derive this small l from a conservation or non-conservation of magnetic flux, okay? So the capital L will be derived from conservation of mass, okay? Assuming, so how about its length? In other words, how about its length, capital L? This is what we're talking about. Uh, you know, uh, what is capital L? So um, in order to do that, we, we use mass conservation. And uh, assuming incompressibility, we, let's, not, let's neglect compressibility effects for a minute just to make life simple. 
If, you know, otherwise that, that introduces yet another, that throws a spanner in the works, as it were, and, and it introduces yet another complication. So let's not, let's not bother about ourselves with that complication. So let us say, and we know uh, in, the incompressible condition is given by this, divergence of V equals zero. And so if divergence of V equals zero is equivalently expressed as VI times large L is equal to V naught times small L, where VI is the inflow velocity, or uh, shall we say, to keep it simple, inflow speed, and this is called, this is the outflow speed. And what outflow are we talking about? Well, this outflow, this outflow right here. This is what we're talking about. And this would be the inflow. Okay, right. So VI times, uh, th this is essentially the, uh, you know, the one dimensional equivalent of, of uh, divergence of V equals zero. Okay, so now, so the ratio of the large L to the small L is given by the ratio of V naught to VI. Okay, uh, that's what this is telling us. Now, total pressure, now th there has to be pressure equilibrium across a current sheet. Okay, otherwise a current sheet will, will, will either keep expanding or it will keep collapsing if there's no pressure equilibrium. It's only if there is pressure equilibrium that you will have a steady state scenario. Okay, so across a current sheet, so you have P naught, which is kind of inside the current sheet. Are inside the reconnection region right and this whole thing is outside So the pressure inside the reconnection region and the pressure outside are balanced. Of course, there are different contributions to the pressure. Outside the reconnection region, you have the gas pressure, which is PI, and the magnetic field pressure, which is in, in this case, we are writing it in, in SI units. So instead of B squared over eight pi, you have B squared over two mu naught. Okay, it's just a change of units. As such, physically nothing different is happening. It's just the way we're writing it. Anyhow, there's gas pressure and magnetic pre field pressure. Whereas inside the reconnection region, you notice there is no magnetic field pressure. There's only gas pressure. Very curious, isn't it? Why is that? Well, remember, we were saying that inside the reconnection region, the magnetic field is annihilated. The magnetic field is essentially driven down to zero. It's eaten up. Magnetic flux is eaten up. There is no magnetic field right there in that very small reconnection region. That's why you don't have any appearance of a B naught squared. Okay, there is no B naught. Okay, it's a null point, it's an X null as in null of magnetic field. So there's no magnetic pressure, there's only particle pressure. So inside the reconnection region, there's only particle or gas pressure and outside you have gas pressure plus magnetic field pressure. So th these are, uh, these have to be in equilibrium. Yeah, at the point where the pressure equals P naught, the magnetic field is zero. This is what we just said. Now, integrating the momentum equation, hmm, you get the difference in pressures is simply one half rho v naught squared. This is, we neglect the Lorentz forces, why? Because, because B is nearly zero in the, the reconnection region. So Lorentz forces are J cross B so it's not so important. So therefore, we so this gives you something about that. This is the outflow velocity. This tells you how fast the outflow velocity will be. It depends upon the difference in gas pressures in the reconnection region and outside. Of course, on the mass density, no doubt. Okay. So now, taken together, what will happen is you you will find out if if you solve these, you'll find out that. The outflow velocity 
is uh, essentially uh, in the alphane velocity. The alphane velocity far away from the reconnection region, right? In the reconnection region, the alphane velocity falls to zero because the magnetic flux is zero, right? Taken together, uh, this is what we uh, come up with and this is all important reconnection rate. It's really a speed, okay? So, what this is, this is what's called the reconnection rate, okay? It's a self-limiting process, really. It's not as if you, 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 you see this, it's not as if I can, Vi is this velocity, right? It's not as if I can drive these oppositely magnetic, oppositely directed magnetic fields together at any arbitrary speed. No, I cannot. I can only drive it with the speed that's commensurate with the fact that whatever magnetic flux I'm bringing in here needs to be eaten away immediately, okay? The rates have to balance. The rate of, of uh, you know, bringing together of magnetic flux has to balance the rate at which they're eaten away, number one. Number two, the mass fluxes has to have to be equal. Number three, there has to be pressure equilibrium Okay, otherwise the current sheet will grow thinner and thinner. If you want a, 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 a current sheet thickness that stays constant with time, there has to be pressure equilibrium. If I have to satisfy all of these three conditions, okay, I, I find that there is a very specific number for the speed at which I can bring these oppositely directed magnetic fields together. And that is equal to the, the alphane speed outside in uh, very far from the reconnection region divided by the magnetic Reynolds number, uh, uh, square root of the magnetic Reynolds number, which is defined by this. Okay, the magnetic Reynolds number is defined by um, the alphane speed times the macroscopic length divided by lambda. Okay, now if the lambda is technically almost close to zero, the magnetic Reynolds number goes to infinity and uh, vice versa. If the lambda is large, then the magnetic Reynolds number is small. Okay, so this is, this is the all important reconnection rate. And this is just something, this is just a quirk of um, the terminology. It's what is normally called the reconnection rate is really a reconnection speed. Okay, okay. Now, why are we so concerned about reconnection rate? You see, this is the steady state reconnection. This is the reconnection rate that we derived in the previous slide. Okay, but now this is a, a, another thing to uh, ponder. How does this compare with the diffusion rate? In other words, if I, if I write down the Okay, and if I dimensionalize these things, B times some T naught inverse B over some L square. If I plug this in, this will give me the diffusion time scale. This T naught inverse, is, this, this T naught is the diffusion time scale. How does this compare with the diffusion rate? It's useful, I urge you to work this out. How does this compare with this T naught? Well, you have to, you have, to, this is a, this is actually a rate, in other, in other words, this is a time scale. So if you want to convert it into, in, into a speed, uh, you have to invoke a, invoke a length scale. Maybe you should invoke the macroscopic length scale. Okay, so I urge you to compare it uh, with the diffusion rate. Turns out that the diffusion rate is always very, very small. Okay, the, the reconnection rate is substantially larger, okay. But the thing is, you know, in astrophysical, and we hinted at this um, a little earlier, problem here is that the magnetic Reynolds number in astrophysical plasmas is very large. Since the resistivity, you see this is the, this is the definition of the Reynolds number. If the, if the resistivity is very small, the Reynolds number is very large. And unfortunately, the Reynolds number appears in the denominator here. The dependence is, is a little weak because there's a square root. Okay, so the dependence is a little weak, but still the Reynolds number appears in the denominator. So if the Reynolds number is large, the reconnection rate is small. This is the thing. Okay, so the reconnection rate is small, small in comparison to what? Small in comparison to the alphane speed. Okay, 
So, and I wanna, I wanna, you know, talk a little bit about this sentence uh, in a minute. So, this is not what the observations mandate. What the observations, for instance, what do you really mean by this sentence? Well, let, let's back up a little bit. Let us consider a specific phenomenon like a flare, a flare on the sun in the solar corona, uh, which is a flare is simply, um, you know, uh, an increase in, if you, if you were plotting the, uh, say, the x-ray flux as a function of time, okay. Uh, and this can be x-ray flux, this can be ultraviolet flux, this can be flux at any wavelength, okay, as a function of time. It, it, a flare is just this. It increases and then it decreases. It need not be symmetric like this. Many times the increase is very abrupt and the, and, and the dying off is very gradual. Either way, this is a flare. Uh, you know, you, you strike a matchstick, flame uh, flares up, that's a flare. Okay, it's just an increase in the number of photons as a function of time. X-ray photons are plotted on the uh, y-axis and the number of photons increases. This is what a flare is. The question is, what is this time scale? Say, uh, you know, one half of maximum time scale. What is this time scale? And so this is what the observations mandate. But mind you, this has got nothing to do with, re I mean, as such, it's, it's a very indirect thing to relate this time scale to anything like the reconnection time scale. But the thing is, it's as follows. The line of reasoning is as follows. Well, you know, who was responsible for heating the plasma? We are holding the reconnection process to be responsible for heating the plasma, isn't it? So, if the reconnection, if the magnetic flux is annihilated at a certain time scale, the heating also happens at approximately that time scale because it's the annihilated magnetic flux that leads to heating. If the magnetic flux is is annihilated over a certain time scale, the heating also happens at that time scale. And, and therefore, once the plasma is heated over a certain time scale, it will also radiate, hot bodies radiate. It radiates, and this is observed radiation plotted on the y-axis. So the, since the heating occurs at a certain time scale, and then after the heating is turned off, in other words, after the reconnection stops, uh, well, uh, you know, the, the flux has to fall, the, the plasma has to cool. Of course, there are conductivity effects, okay, uh, to be, to be uh, worried about. It's not as if, uh, you know, that, that the region which is, which is um, you know, radiating is completely thermally isolated from its surroundings. You have to worry about conductivity. But roughly speaking, you know, once the heating is turned off, the plasma has to cool. And so the observed, um, you know, radiation also falls down. So it's in that sense that the time scale, the observational time scale is roughly this, and you compare this with the alphine speed that you expect in the medium. And turns out that the time scale over which uh, this happens uh, is, is uh, roughly similar to the alphine time scale or, or something like, you know, yeah. So uh, whereas if, if you plug in typically assume numbers for the Reynolds, a number, the magnetic Reynolds number in astrophysical plasmas, turns out that the VI, uh, the, the reconnection rate, is actually very, very small. It's nothing close to the alphine time scale. Whereas the observations kind of mandate what's called an alphine time scale. So there's a problem with this nice scenario. And how to solve this problem? Petchik came up with a very innovative solution to uh, solve this problem. And we will talk about this and when we meet next. So for the time being, thank you. Thank you.